Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash Entitled People, where people truly believe the world's all about them and who cares about others, right? And in today's episode, Karens are causing trouble in restaurants and hotels, guys, absolutely destroying the place. I hope you enjoy the stories, don't shake your heads too hard, and as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. Okay, so I made this account to share this story because, oh boy, let me tell you. I got the craziest, most entitled request I've ever gotten last week, but we'll get to that later. First, I work in the fast food industry at a low-tier pizza place in a nasty part of town. It's an alright job. I usually arrive around 11am and leave around 7pm on days we aren't catering. Also, because we're the only pizza place in the area that can handle high volume catering requests on short notice, it's not uncommon for us to get a call the day before, asking us to cater. This is usually not a big deal. We arrive to work around 8am to start prepping ingredients, getting boxes folded, and generally just getting prepared for the ordeal. The first thing to go wrong on this particular day was a woman coming in and demanding, not requesting or asking, that we shut down the entire restaurant for her son's birthday party. Upon telling her that we can't do that, the woman screams at me in the face saying, It's my son's birthday. Why would he want to play with strangers around? I tell her, Ma'am, I'm sorry, but we can't just shut down a whole restaurant. At this point, Karen tells me to let her speak to the manager. The manager comes out and asks her, is there a problem ma'am? Karen, suddenly calm and respectful says, this woman is refusing to serve me and she's on purpose trying to ruin my son's birthday. Manager tells her, ma'am, I don't think she's trying to ruin it. We have a policy against this particular thing. We can't shut down a whole restaurant for your son's birthday and certainly not with no notice at all. Hearing that, Karen's almost in tears, and she says, Sir, I'm begging you. I promised my son a birthday here. There's people coming in a few hours. Please. After 10 minutes of negotiating, the manager agrees that he would bend the rule slightly and close just over a third of normal restaurants, in addition to the party room. After a grueling 4-hour prep, we finally finished over 20 extra-large pizzas, 30 orders of cinnamon sticks, 3 dozen cheese sticks, basically 2 bathtubs of soda, a vat of ranch, and a few dozen chicken tenders. This left me around an hour to prepare myself mentally for the crap storm that's slowly approaching. The kids start arriving just before 1 o'clock, and by 1.15, the party room was full. By 2 o'clock, a third of the restaurant that had been reserved was full. This was almost his entire first grade class. And all of this was before the kids' family arrived. By the time they were all there, over two-thirds of the restaurant was full. Plus the party room was full and kids were going crazy. They were running and yelling, eating and drinking in the arcade, and parents had ordered an average of two pitchers of beer per table and they were getting drunk. At around 3 o'clock, I began working up the courage to tell them they'd been cut off. We had never had to do something like that before as it's a family pizza place. And even though we've hosted hundreds of kids parties, nobody ever got this level of drunk. I'm talking, people were so drunk that some started lighting up cigarettes in the restaurant, not giving a care in the world. Thankfully, this is when the manager intervenes and told them if they can't calm their kids and themselves down, they would be asked to leave, and this would turn out to be a mistake. Karen starts drunkenly ranting how the pizza, which she herself ate a ton of, was like cardboard, as well as how she'd make sure no one ever ate here again, and how she'd gotten us on camera doing all sorts of things, like spitting on the food, cursing at her kids, etc, etc. I'd been up since 6.30 in the morning, and I'd spent so much time and effort on this nightmare of a family that I could actually feel myself aging. They only had until 4pm, and it was just after 3.15pm, and the place was trashed. I thought I could sneak to the back to take a 5 minute break, and then hopefully get a head start on cleaning before they left. And spoiler alert, I couldn't. I was on break for maybe 2 minutes, when a woman who seemed sober enough starts waving to get my attention. 
and I want to note I had my earbuds in. I just sighed loudly, hoping she'd take the hint, and then gestured to my earbuds, thinking she would leave me alone. But when I didn't respond, she practically marches up and she rips one of my earbuds out. And she says to me, What are you doing? Get back to work. I basically scream at her saying, I'm on break. She says, There's people who need you in there. I've been looking all over for someone. Listen, my neighbor's parents live on a big farm that has two huge hunting dogs that I bring food to when I can. Instead of the scraps going to waste, I need you to go inside and gather up all the bread scraps and any pizza that people aren't eating right now and bag it for me. It's at this point I snap back to reality and I tell her, I just started my break, you can go ask another worker. But this woman was relentless, she would not give in. She says, you need to go do it, we are going to be leaving soon. At this point, I'm just too tired to argue or even begin to explain why this is such a ridiculous request. So like the absolute coward I am, I did exactly what she asked me to. I went around to 40 plus tables and I filled up a trash bag worth of gross, wet, smelly bread. And when I finished this 15 minute undertaking, I brought her the bag. And when I went to hand it to her, she looked in the bag, grimaced, and said, You can go ahead and put it in my trunk. My husband's pulling up front. Again, being a strong mix of cowardly and just over this crap, I took it out to her husband in the car. When I got back in, she was just walking out, and while I was holding the door open, she just walked by. Didn't even look at me or thank me at all. I went to continue my break only to have another woman running up to me, letting me know that two people were throwing up in the bathrooms and it's all over the floor. That was right at the moment my manager comes up and he said someone spilled a whole bottle of Pepsi all over the new air hockey table. That's when I told him about the puke and he said he told everyone they had to leave. Everyone slowly and drunkenly started making their way to the parking lot. After I was sure they'd all left, I walked out to see who else. The same Karen that demanded we shut our whole restaurant down for her kid's birthday is going around picking up all the tips that all the other families in her party had left for me and my manager. When I started to approach her, she went off about how horrible the service was and how she would be getting her money back for the meal and how embarrassed she was about how crappy the experience was and that we ruined her kid's birthday party. When she saw my manager filming, she took the money she had just picked up and she throws it at the camera, calling us broke effing bitches and then stormed off but not before spitting on our glass door what a wonderful birthday party that was and the cleanup took over two hours my freaking goodness i bet the manager didn't expect that mess to occur when they agreed to a last minute party and just when you thought things couldn't get worse right karen ends up stealing tips from the tables at the end and complaining about customer service like if they didn't all act like drunk animals letting their kids run wild Maybe the customer service would have been good. I don't know. I'm just honestly shocked that nobody else was there to help with a party that size. And guys, if you think that party was wild, listen to this next one. So who else loves Bridezilla stories? Because boy, do I have one. Buckle up, because it's a long one. It includes drunken adults and minors, shoplifting, the end of at least two relationships, and a very long visit from your friendly neighborhood police officers. Oh, and also a few evictions and a crap ton of overtime for my employees. It was like we were the host of a live version of the Jerry Springer show last night. Needless to say, there's going to be an employee appreciation party very soon, since none of them walked out on me with all the crazy stuff that happened. With that said, I'm a front desk manager at a hotel that has 132 rooms, and the wedding party that stayed with us last night had rented 70 of them. But that's not all. We also had not one, but two school sports teams in the house, renting a combined total of 30 rooms. Needless to say, our hotel was very well bursting at the seams, especially since each group wanted to be as far away from the other as possible. And on top of that, we had to pack regular travels between them all. Hardy, hardy, am I right? Well, hindsight is 2020, and we should have realized that we were in for a crap storm two days ago. Bridezilla and her groom King Kong and the wedding party of monsters all checked in then. The men had checked into one of our largest suites for a bachelor party, while the women checked into another for their bachelorette party. 
Now, we fully expected the men to cause a riot, because they were hauling in beer literally by the keg. In reality, Bridezilla and her bridesmaids were the ones that went on a rampage. Not only did they tally up a total of three noise complaints and over $100 worth of pantry charges, they actually paid a group of kids $20 each to run up and down the hallways. I can only suspect that it was because they meant to use the kids as a distraction from their own rough housing. The employee on duty that night said a guest came down to report that they thought the room was being used to film a Girls Gone Wild video. But the sun eventually set, and I came into work my morning shift the next day. I stupidly didn't see all the red flags sailing in front of my face. Less than 15 minutes into my shift, Bridezilla's maid of honor comes down. She sees that I'm standing behind a desk and wearing a name tag, so she rightfully treats me like I'm not a human being. Because as we all know, people that work in customer service are just robots in cheap flesh suits. Beep. Boop. The woman chews me out a bit for my employee's despicable behavior last night towards herself and her best friends. I run through my robot programming and I say, we're sorry that you felt disrespected and insulted. But I inform her that her room had multiple noise complaints against it. I tell her, we're very strict on our noise policy, ma'am. You aren't the only guest in the hotel and if you can't be courteous to our other guests, we will kindly ask that you seek other accommodations. Now, Bridezilla's maid of honor did not like that. She said to me, well, it's just my opinion. But as someone who's a part of a wedding that brought your hotel more more than 60 rooms worth of business, I think you guys should be a little more lenient with the rules for us. We're paying a lot of money, you know. Unfortunately, my SAS module was not installed at the time due to lack of sleep. So instead of going Minnesota nice on her, I told her, we're trying to provide a consistent experience to all guests. I know you guys are throwing a party and it's happy time for many of you, but we can't bend our noise policy. After that exchange, she has a list of people arriving today that she wants me to assign to specific rooms because I have to make sure certain people aren't coming too close together. She told me that some of them have cheated on other ones, but they promise to behave themselves if they don't have to look at each other. Now, I may just be a simple robot that can't consume liquid beverages, but in my opinion, I don't believe exes and alcohol mix well. The maid of honor also asked for housekeeping to come up as soon as possible to clean their trashed room because they're going to use it as a prep room for the wedding. The housekeeping executive doesn't show up for another hour, and I refuse to leave the desk to spend time cleaning their room. I told her that she would have to wait a bit before someone came in, to which she again offered her opinion and said, I really think a hotel this big should have someone always on duty for stuff like this, don't you think? By now, it's 9 a.m., basically dawn of the second day. And would you believe it, people for the wedding are already showing up to check in. It's wonderful that all these people are so punctual that they're an entire six hours early, just so they aren't late. Graciously, we weren't full the previous night, so I allowed them to check into their rooms as they showed up. But you want to know what I honestly thought? They all looked like clones of that one woman from the that's my opinion gif that I keep referencing. And I did not want to test how well my eardrums could stand up to a whole choir of sirens. The small highlight to the busy morning is there was a professional that came in and did the hair for all the kids involved in the wedding party. They were all adorable. The rest of the morning passes by in a flash. I had done at least 40 of the 75 arrivals we had for the day. The PM shift arrives and I catch her up to speed and offer to stay late with her. I expected it to be just as crazy until the wedding starts at 5. She declines and she says she'll be fine. She soon sends me a text message later regretting it. At 5 o'clock, she had a line of people out the door. All of them are a part of the wedding group and screaming at her because they're now late for the wedding. More than 5 women were demanding she give them keys so they could go change in their rooms without having to bother with stupid things like payments or signatures. She was a trooper and stood her ground, asking all of them to wait their turn to check in. My houseman on duty even offered to help her if she signed onto the second computer for him. 
but that small ray of hope was quickly squashed. A mother on the third floor calls down to inform us that her son has swallowed a huge quantity of pool water. The pool water upset his stomach and he ends up vomiting all over the elevator and third floor. The very same floor that the wedding party was pre-assigned and checking into. So he had to go deal with that. Once that rush was over with, it was all quiet for a few peaceful hours. And then it was time for the shuttle to pick them up. Weddings usually all follow the same pattern. They ask for shuttle service from 8 p.m. until 1 a.m. They're happy to pay our outlandish fee for private use of the shuttle. And then no one bothers to use it until 11 p.m., at which point the alcohol makes them view the shuttle as a clown car, and they all believe they've joined the circus. Tonight followed the same pattern, with only one exception. At 8.30, the driver had a single woman ride back to the hotel, sobbing her eyes out. She told him that she saw her fiancé making out with her cousin behind the reception hall and she couldn't believe it. He tries to offer her comforting words on the way back, but I'm told it was all around an awkward 15 minute ride. When she gets back to the hotel, she demands that we take her card off file and make her ex-fiancé pay. Except we don't, because we need him to come down and slide his card. The chances of that happening were slim to none. So as my shuttle driver was busy acting as the Ronald McDonald clown bus, stuffing close to triple the legal capacity into it because not a single person bothered to listen to him, I'm sure you all have one burning question on mind. What about those sports teams? Have they caused any problems? If you guessed yes, then you're right. One of the two teams had rented out a conference room to have a pizza party in. They were informed several times that they only had the room from 5pm till 9pm. And after the children stuffed themselves full of pizza, they ran off to use the swimming pool. And as I'm sure you're all aware, global law states that if you're at a hotel for your kid's sport event, you're legally allowed to get completely wasted. And I mean absolutely crap-faced. At that point, the hotel staff is supposed to babysit your gremlins so you can party like you're 21 again. Isn't that swell? So our houseman is trying to get the kids to behave themselves and to stay quiet in the pool, while the front desk is threatening to evict the parents. Because it's now 10.30 and Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus is being blasted from the conference room. It could be heard through every inch of the hotel. Meanwhile, the one singular mother that was actually being responsible stopped by the desk with about 20 bottles of Diet Coke and her son. Apparently the vending machine's broken on the second floor. She said her son put in the money and then proceeded to press a button a hundred times while waiting for his soda. Now, the kid must have had a hack or something downloaded for that vending machine to his phone because he knew the right amount of times to press the buttons so the machine would continue spitting out pops. The son did it two more times before the mom realized you can't buy 20 pops with $5 and she forced him to bring them all back down to the desk and apologize for stealing them. The other parents back in the conference room had been waving off the front desk's threats until we finally got a lucky break. The night audit came in half an hour early because the weather was bad and she didn't want to be late. My night auditor has plenty of years under her belt and she's seen far worse. She called the police within seconds of walking in. When the police arrived, the parents had all belligerently returned to their rooms and my PM desk shift was able to go home after the stressful day of work. But this is when the real fun starts. The officers got called away only a few minutes after arriving, but we know exactly where they went after that. They actually got called to the reception hall where the wedding was being held. Apparently, they needed to shut down the bar because the parents were buying drinks for kids who were under 20 years old. Plus, one of the kids that was drinking became heavily intoxicated. He stole the keys to his mom's car from her purse, and he crashes it into another car in the parking lot. Now, the kid was fine, but probably suffered a wicked hangover this morning. The reception hall had called the police to kick them all out, and that's when they became our problem again. You see, the driver now had to pick them all up at 12 o'clock. There was at least 35 people crammed into the bus, and each one was holding a beer glass with at least half a pint of beer in it. He puts his foot down then. He turns the shuttle off and told them that they weren't allowed to have open alcoholic beverages in a vehicle, and he said he wouldn't drive them back until they disposed of them. 
Needless to say, it doesn't go over well. None of them listened to him, and they just berated him to bring them all back because it was cold. One of the officers on site came over and told the driver that they'd be willing to escort him back, and they would overlook the many passengers and their open alcohol just so they could get these people back inside. When the shuttle and the police entourage showed up at the hotel half an hour later, it was like unleashing Pandora's box upon the building. Four officers even stayed around to help deal with all the drunk and disorderly because there was a lot of complaints. The first thing that happened was that somebody was complaining about a room on the first floor. Someone was attempting to do an amateur remake of Fifty Shades of Grey, and they were not being subtle about it. And then came the screaming, breaking of lamps, and punching of walls. Remember that cousin that broke up someone's relationship earlier? Well, she apparently had a fiancé of her own. And while she was doing the nasty with another man, her drunken fiancé walked in on them, and it did not end well. We had to evict all three of them. Meanwhile, on the third floor, Girls Gone Wild had resumed in full force. The night audit went up with one of the officers to tell the group that this was their final warning before they were all evicted from the hotel as well. While she was doing so, a man in the room across the hall just opens his door to yell at the night audit. His exact words were, Why are you dragging me out of bed? Do something about this damn noise! Before the officer could say anything, the night audit spun on him, and she said, You got out of bed of your own volition, sir. We're dealing with this situation. It's all the same song and dance for the next few hours. People call to complain, the audit and officers deal with it, and eventually someone slips into sleep. And by slip into sleep, I mean blackout drunk and passed out. Apparently the officers were having a slow night, and two of them stayed until the night audit was done, since she didn't feel safe on her own. My houseman stayed until 3am to help the night audit with moral support and cleaning the hallways, because they were trashed with a capital T. Towards the end of the evening, a man comes down to our pantry. He takes an armful of random items and he starts walking away. The guy's clearly drunk because the officers watched him, and the night audit even calls out, asking if the man would like to charge his items to his room. Said man must have actually been a deer in a trench coat, because he sprinted off the second she asked. An officer caught him, and he was so drunk that our night audit actually took pity, and said we won't press charges, and just to escort him back to his room. And now, today, I come in at 7am, and I'm caught up to speed. I'll tell you, seeing a cop standing around the front desk does not do my heart any good. If I have to come in and see a cop, I fully expect them to be there because someone got murdered. That morning was quiet though, too quiet. And that's when I hear it, the drunken heavy stomps down the staircase. The screaming agony of a stomach demanding food above alcohol. And that's when Bridezilla descends into the lobby with a hunger. A hunger that can only be satiated by screaming at the manager. So I take it, I listen to her scream and demand that everyone in her party be refunded. All 70 rooms. She can't believe that we had the audacity to call the cops on her friends and family. Because it's a wedding, she shouts over and over. We're supposed to have fun, not be treated like a bunch of dogs. I didn't really want to deal with her BS, so I told her, Ma'am, you need to keep it down or else I'll call the cops back. Our employees were verbally threatened by some of your guests last night and they did not feel safe. In reality, I wanted to say that if they don't want to be treated like dogs, they should not act like dogs. And this is when the wedding party began to check out, but not before they trashed breakfast. There was food dropped, coffee spilled, and my two breakfast attendants swear it was done on purpose. When they were cleaning up some spilled coffee, a bridesmaid knocked over another cup of coffee, and they all snickered at them. And that's my tale of Bridezilla. I've already gotten two emails from our guest relations department, saying there have been complaints opened up against us about the employee behavior last night, but they're both from members of the wedding party. So all I have to do is submit a copy of the police report, and I think we'll be good. I pray that all of you never have to deal with Bridezillas of your own. And if you do, Godspeed and good luck. Well, that was quite the tale, wasn't it? Dealing with hockey parents and kids and a rowdy wedding party, holy moly, like reading this story, I just wanted to quit right then and there. Like, I can't imagine what it was like working there, dealing with all those people. 
And don't even get me started on the audacity of the bride to stomp down and demand all of her guests be compensated. Like seriously, after all you guys did. Like did she think cops came for fun and it was no big deal? The only people entitled to compensation in my opinion were the guests that weren't a part of either group. One more thing, I only wish OP didn't bite her tongue, and she told that Karen, Ma'am, but you're not dogs. Dogs are better behaved in most cases. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's another r slash entitled people, where Karen wives are going insane, all because their husbands are in the military. Guys, it's such a funny episode, so go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.